Hi, my name is Taklus, and this is an extended look at my upcoming Project Spark game, Terminal Island. As you can see, right off the bat, we have a menu, and we're allowed to choose if we're going to play as a female or a male. For this particular playthrough, I'm going to play as a female. When we start, we are, um, as you can see, we've crash landed here on our ship, and we're in a very atmospheric and hostile location immediately, which is the name for Terminal Island. I'm going to go ahead and skip the tutorial, but the tutorial is a very in-depth way to get started with the game. Let's open up the emergency crate on the side of our ship, and it looks like we got a bottle of medicine, a bottle of water, a breathing mask, which immediately equips to our player model, and a piece of food. This isn't a lot, but it will get you started in the short term. The first thing we need to do is we need to immediately start scavenging the area, because night is already coming upon us. All of these buildings and just structures around us, with the exclusion of some of these larger ones, are all randomly generated every time you play. Every time you play, you have a random chance to get any type of resource and building. Some buildings have better resources than others. Some of them have no resources. It all depends on how that particular playthrough went. So the first thing that we're going to want to craft is the axe. It's the most basic and most essential thing that you're going to craft in the whole game it will allow you to harvest resources. To do that, we're gonna need two wood and two stone. So it looks like we have one wood and one stone so far. So let's scavenge through the area. Here we come to a structure that looks like it had some string and some stone on it. All of these structures have resources that slowly regenerate over time. So it's worth coming back to check them out again. Here we come across one of the first enemies in the game, a de desert scavenger. In Terminal Island, the combat is pretty tough, especially later in the game, you're going to definitely need an energy shield to get going. These early creatures aren't going to kill you too bad, but in a group of three or four of them, they could down your health pretty quickly. The combat in Terminal Island starts pretty simple and picks up as the game goes along, but the most basic form of combat is to carefully press the X button. Every time you press the X button, with a pause, it increases the level of attack that you do. So the first time you press X, you do a light attack, the next time you do a medium, the next time you do... That's the basis of the combat. Certain creatures will be more immune to certain attacks than others. Looks like we picked up some medicine there. And it looks like that we have enough resources to go ahead and craft the axe. As you can see, since this is one of the objectives to start the game, it does have a, uh, a heads up little exclamation mark above it. We can go to it, craft it, and we've constructed the axe. The axe is extremely important for gameplay because we can go ahead and harvest pretty much anything that we see. If it's not a building, we can harvest it. Since that particular piece of scrap was made mostly out of iron, we got three iron ingots out of it. This is Creolisk. This is one of the most important resources in the game. If you see this, it's worth killing anything and anyone in your way to go find it. It's rare, and it only appears one in about uh, 20 chance or so. Let's go ahead and harvest this. And it looks like that it dropped some uh, creolisk. This green mineral acts as an energy source and is very vital to beat the game. Many things that require um, advancement in the game require creolisk to craft them. So, it looks like they're already off to a good start by having five creolisk. There's also some of the simpler things to harvest, such as string, herbs, and wood. All of these different locations that you can get resources from will eventually regenerate with more resources in the future. But that does take quite a bit of time, so you can't just stay in one spot and farm for a while. But after you clear out an area, you can come back and clear it out again. When there's enemies in the area, it's a good idea to focus them over resource collecting, and in fact the game encourages that by not allowing you to interact while there's enemies nearby. The dodge mechanic, as you can see, the strafe is very important to evade combat, so I felt that it was best to keep it um, easily accessible at any time during combat. Let's go ahead and harvest this. As you can see, this is the basic idea of Terminal Island. Now, it will be pretty fun, because there's lots of things to craft, 
But I'm gonna go ahead and skip some of the grindy bits where you're re collecting resources, which later in the game the resources do come easier and better. And I'm going to go ahead and just cheat and give myself as many resources as I can imagine. We have another enemy here, and this is a sand wolf. Sand wolves are pretty intelligent and lonesome creatures. You can see I can get this close to him and it's not even bothering him or me. Now if I get closer, he'll start to defend his territory. And once he starts defending it, he'll never leave you alone. He can run just as fast as you can. And if you attack, he'll try to run away from you. You have to wait until he's up close and personal to do some attacking. As you can see, I did a backflip to evade his damage because the wolf does an especially large amount of damage. Let's go back here and use one of my awesome developer tricks to give myself as many resources as I can imagine. Which, in this case, I'm going to give myself a lot. We are at about 500 resources. Let's go from there. So, as I've said, most of the objects in this world randomly generate every time you play. But this particular building, and this one over there, always are there. Let's go to this one, and it has a flag at it. If it has a flag, that means that you can build it as a... Um... So this safe house would be pretty expensive early in the game. You need 20 wood, 5 stone, 5 string, and 1 sulfur. Let's accept to do that, and it'll take 30 seconds to craft that. While that's going, let's go over to this base over here. This isn't a base, um, this isn't a safe house or a shelter like that one is. But it's more of a resource place that you need to advance further in the game. So, if we were to go up to the door, it wouldn't let us in. We would need to repair this generator first before it would let us in. So I'm going to go ahead and repair this. Now this would be very expensive early in the game unless you did a decent amount of resource collecting. Something else worth buying here. Especially considering how dark he gets at night. Let's kill these scavengers really quick. Something worth buying uh, early in the game is a flashlight, which automatically illuminates in the dark without you having to equip anything. There are also torches available for cheaper, but you have to equip them and they decrease your combat ability. So when we unlocked this building, it gave us a couple of crates of goodies. And from here, we could advance the story. But I'm not going to worry about the story for now, because that's part of the fun for you. What I do want to show you are the energy shields. Now, if you're just playing the game for the first time, you could click here, and it would tell you everything you need to know. What I can tell you is that these shields work similar to uh, Borderlands energy shields. You can purchase a shield, and this machine spools up, and it will create a shield for you. This particular one has a 19 capacity, a 6.3 second recharge delay, and it will recharge at just under one capacity per, uh, I think it's per frame. Let's equip that, and that creates a new piece on my heads of display, and you can now see there is a shield on my back. That shield will take the brunt of the hits before I do. So when, um, when I get hit, it will take damage first. Now I just purchased the booster pack. This is something that's not essential for the game, and in fact you can play the whole game without it. But it does help getting you out of sticky situations into places that aren't nearly as accessible. Let's advance farther in the game. We've been spending the entire game so far just in the starting area, which is a pretty large area. Now I'm going to go attack this wolf really quickly to demonstrate my shield's ability. So my shield took three of those six hits before it went to my health. Now my shield won't start regenerating until I don't take damage for six and a half seconds or so. Then it will regenerate, and it becomes the buffer for my health again. Early in the game, it's pretty helpful to keep the little cuts and bruises off of you that you may get by learning the combat. And in later game, they're absolutely essential for fighting the crazier bosses. Now off in the distance there, we can see a plume of smoke. Those plumes of smoke are pretty important because they're one-time use care packages. It looks like that a crate from Titan Industries, which are the people that attempted to inhabit this facility, this island, but failed. Looks like a crate fell off one of their ships and it's filled with goodies. So we've got masks and food and medicine and the whole nine yards. 
as you can see, we do have a number of meters on the screen that we have. We have our health, our thirst, our hunger, and our breathing mask. Our, um... Those, except for the health, all of those wear down over time. So the thirst and the hunger wear down pretty consistently unless you start sprinting. Sprinting allows you to run faster and jump farther at the expense of using your resources quicker. Breathing mask has a larger capacity and isn't affected by sprinting. If your hunger or thirst run out, you begin to lose health. And obviously if your health runs out, you die. So we've advanced to the next section of the island and here is a rather large facility. This is one of the most important facilities in the game. Here's another enemy as well that I have that are called War Toads. During the day, they're invincible and they sleep. So during the day, you don't have to worry about them. But at night, they're one of the nastiest enemies in the game. Here we need to repair another generator. But unlike the first one, this one's not as expensive because it's water powered rather than creolisk powered. So once we power it, the blade turns back on and we're allowed to access the base. We can hop on this fancy elevator go upstairs and we have a number of different things at our disposal but before that let's build this shelter too now don't think that I forgot about the first shelter we built because it's important that we built it and at least left it behind as we look around upstairs we have this device here which allows us to change our revival location when you die you'll revive at your ship unless we change it to this particular location then we'll revive here when we when we die there's also a few crates up here that we can open up and get more resources out of. Now it looks like that my thirst and hunger meters are completely full at this point. So when I eat and drink, it won't, um, it won't go into my thirst or hunger meters. It'll instead go into my reserve, which I can access at any time, whenever I want. So it sounds like that the shelter repair is done and we have a couple more machines that have appeared. This machine we can activate and it'll give me one breathing mask with a minute cooldown. We can activate this machine and it'll give me two pieces of food, also with a minute cooldown. And here we have another energy shield creator, similar to the one that we saw earlier, but this one is far more advanced. This one will give me a higher grade shield with a higher capacity. And this one will have modifiers. The name is dependent on the modifier. So it looks like that this one will give me health regen along with a decent shield capacity. Let's equip that and the shield on my backpack will change models. Let's say that I want to do another spin in the shield, but I don't want to lose this shield. I can go to one of my shield recall machines, interact with it, and let's just swap my shield with it. Now I'm not currently, I don't have any shield equipped and I've instead transferred my shield into this machine. Let's go ahead and go back to the machine, hit it again, and see if we can get a shield with a higher capacity. And it looks like we did, nearly twice the capacity. Let's equip that, and we can probably be on our way. Something else that we can do is we can go up here, and this is a fast travel machine. As you probably noticed, this has been a pretty decent walk from start to finish, and it only gets longer from here. We're not even halfway across the island yet. Every time you unlock a base, or a shelter, it opens up these abilities so you can fast travel. From the first shelter to here anytime we want at no extra cost. Something else we can do is we can purchase a knife. Now this is an advanced knife. There was an earlier knife in the game that we could have purchased as well, but this one is a much better knife. It's made purely of creolisk and will do a lot more damage at a higher attack rate. Now if you haven't been noticing, and it's okay if you haven't, but it looks like that my shield is regenerating extremely slowly. Let's say I don't like that. Let's say I want my health regen shield back. I can do that, and I can swap my shield out with my uh, repair kit. Something else in the mining facilities is there's an entire mining section, which, you know, makes sense for a mining facility. And while it's incomplete at this particular moment, we can go ahead and we could repair a miner and over the period of five minutes he would mine a random selection of ores and deliver them to us whenever we came back to this base to give you some passive income. This is also a machine that will give you a random smattering of iron and creolisk just for going down here. 
as I said, later in the game, resources get a little bit earlier, easier to get. Let's use the um, this and leave the base. But not before hitting up these machines again, because they've recharged. Alright, so let's head out. Now from here, the game picks up pace quite a bit. Up to this point, it's been holding your hand a little bit, and it's been pretty simple. Now, we haven't fought one of the war toads, so, you know, there's a lot still going on. But let's follow this path over here. As you can see, we have another war toad here who's calmly sleeping. We'll leave them alone. And we have a tunnel that is barred off. Now, given the nature of the game, we can always break these bars down into our own pile of resources. But up ahead, there's this green gas, which is definitely not a friendly gas. While we're in this area, it's going to damage us. Now, because of my shield, I'm going to regenerate health very quickly. But part of the story takes place in this area, and you'll probably want to clear out the toxic gas before you do that section. So let's go ahead and repair the generator. and all the toxic gas dissipates. There's also a very high amount of resources in this area, especially the expensive type, like Creolisk. There's more here. And we can open up these particular machines, and Creolisk just rains in. As I said, the farther you go, the easier resources get. But things also get more expensive as the game goes along, so it balances itself out. Let's continue on through here, and here's another set of bars at the end of another tunnel, which you can also break down into parts. As you can see up here, this looks like an entire small cave of Creolisk, which is very valuable. Let's start harvesting some of it. So this would be a jackpot. You'd get lots of resources and all kinds of fun stuff here. Let's hit up this big piece here. Unfortunately, this big piece is alive. This is when we got to get to start to showcase some of the more advanced combat in the game. This is um, the second boss that you could actually face in the game. There's one earlier that I decided to skip over. It is required to advance the game because to open up the colony, which is that rather large facility over there, you need to kill this thing. And it's extremely strong, which is why we have a very good shield, one that regenerates health, and a very good knife. There's also a gun that you could have crafted earlier in the game, but this particular boss will block whenever you try to shoot at him. Let's start attacking. Now this boss will attack at a very fast rate with very little warning. So it's a good idea to have a very strong shield and quite a few pieces of medicine to go attack it with. In case you hadn't noticed, I created this boss by attaching pieces of Creolisk to the Yeti model. Now, I haven't regenerated my medkit yet, so let's run around for a bit and not take damage until my shield regenerates. So, there we go. So, it seems that my medkit shield isn't um, the fastest of regenerating, but it looks like that I finally killed the boss. And he doesn't just disappear, he allows me to mine his entire body. I'm not going to mine the entire body, but I just want to show you that it's possible. One thing that you do need to mine, though, is his head. His head is where the core lies. As you can see, I've harvested the Creolis core. Let's go on, and we're going to go to the largest facility in the game, which has a number of facilities inside of it to unlock, which is the colony. This is your own personal base of operations, which you can fix up, restore, and just make overall fantastic to your heart's desire. But we can't access it yet because the colony has no power. Thankfully, we've harvested a core. Let's install that core. And the colony is now powered. Crank open the doors and see what's inside. At the moment, it's pretty dark because there's not much going on here. But let's repair some of these generators. This generator will turn the lights on. This generator will turn on my basic needs, such as a water drill, food creation, and air purifier. This one will turn on the more advanced needs, and this one gets pretty expensive. 
This will turn on the shield forge, the mechanics shop, and other things that are required to beat the game. And this is the specialty generator, which is also required to be uh, repaired to beat the game. Let's go ahead and look at the different facilities in the colony. Here's one. This is the air purifier and food creation building. Over here, we have a very advanced food creation machine, which when activated, creates four pieces of food with a mere 45 second delay. Now I can only hold 10 pieces of food at a time, which balances out the high rate that you can get food. You can only carry so much with you on a long adventure. Over here, we can activate an air purifier, which will create two gas masks or breather masks with this air pump here. If we leave this building, and we could have just walked around instead, we can access the water drill, which will give us two bottles of water with a one minute cooldown. We also have another fast travel machine here, which we can go to, and it has unlocked um, at different locations. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other facilities. Here we have the medical research building, which looks with what looks like a failed um, surgery here. But we also have another reviver location to here. We can also go to this machine and it will create a bottle of medicine for us, which are very valuable. Currently we have six bottles of medicine in reserve. We can exit this building and this building is the mining and mechanics facility. If we go in here, we have two rather large mining machines and a mechanics table. Here at the mechanics table, we can upgrade our combat ability three times to reduce our hit reactions. Pretty much when you get hit in combat, you will jerk away from whatever hit you. Doing this will reduce your chances, or not reduce your chances, but completely eliminate that from happening. And here we have two different sizes of machines. This one we could have powered for uh, cheaper than this one, but this one also gives better rewards. So we can go to here, and at the cost of 30 iron, 10 creolisk, and 25 stone, we can repair it, and then every five minutes, it will give us a dump of randomized ore. We can also go to this machine here, and rather than giving us a randomized dump of ore, this one will give us only creolisk and iron. So this one is more valuable. There will be further story related stuff in that building as well. That's most of what's available at the colony at this particular moment, though I do have plans to expand if my prop limit allows. We also have the runway over here, which is essential for getting off the island, as you could probably guess. It's a pretty short runway, but it does have a ramp at the end, so you should be able to get off the ground in time. We have the control tower, a satellite, and this will be the ship that we will be taking off with. Obviously, there's a lot of steps between you and escaping the island, but we will definitely get there eventually. Now, there is one more section of the island that I have not yet completed, and I'm not going to show off just yet. But it's going to be pretty fantastic, and the final boss of this game is going to be a serious feat. There's only one more building left in the colony to show you, and that's the Shield Forge. In case you hadn't noticed, I've put a lot of effort into the shields in this game. We have our third and final shield creation machine, and this is getting pretty expensive at this point, but we can get some pretty fantastic shields from this. This has a capacity of 177, as opposed to my current capacity of 25. We can increase this, and it also increases the rate that we regenerate. So let's put this shield in the saving machine. We also have a number of specialty shields. These cost extremely high amounts to craft, but once you craft, you can pick them up at any time and they do special abilities. This particular one, the Isolated Savior, when your shield depletes, it creates a robotic companion for 30 seconds to assist you in combat. This machine is the Concussive Barricade. When you pick it up, it creates a fiery effect and it shoots enemies away when you run out of shield. And this one is the Hydrophobic Shark, which when it's created and equipped, you can swim in the extremely acidic water without taking damage. Let's go to our random shield generator again and create another shield. And let's say we don't like this shield. 
This shield doesn't have a big enough capacity. Maybe we wasted too many of our resources. Whatever it may be. We can go to the shield salving mach salvaging machine. And we can salvage it. And after a moment, it'll cough out a pile of resources. Depending on what grade the shield was. You don't get the full value back. But you do get a decent chunk back to continue creating new shields. So that's an advanced and extended look at turn guys are excited about this world because I certainly am. I'm hoping to release it within the next two months because I do have some story elements left to finish and a lot of bug testing to do, but I'm making good headway and I'm very happy with my progress so far. If you have any suggestions about it so far, please leave it in the comments below or let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have any elements that you'd like to add or you think that this world sorely needs, please let me know as well because I'd love to add those into the world. So. Um, yeah, I also just want to let you guys know, I am now officially moved into my own house at this point. It's not done by any means, but I moved into my own house, so my life is going to calm down eh, a little bit. I don't even have my whole desk set up at this point, but hopefully we can get back to making tutorials at a normal pace in the near future. So, thank you guys very much for watching. Please leave any feedback that you have in the comments, and I will see you guys later.